加埋就唔該。好多謝主席。咁、啊、我都係一個簡短性質嘅對呢個重建。屋村嗰方面咧，同埋嗰個有關嘅叫全面結構暗扎嘅計劃嗰方面問一問嘅啫。因為九八年咧、呃，本人都喺當時都喺房委會，咁亦都睇到當時即係而家回顧到啦，係嘛？當時嗰、那個、呃、公共諮詢之後咧，係有個白皮書關於、呃、重建方面嘅一啲睇法。咁、呃、當時都一個比較清晰嘅就係話，能夠喺安全繼續保養。得好嘅話咧，就應該唔隨便拆嘅，即係唔係動不動就清拆。咁呢個亦都係公共資源嘅一個保障啊。咁我諗呢點咧係合理嘅，亦都好多，所以好多房屋咧都係能夠維持到幾十年。但係當然咧、呃，如果係當時、呃、有部分少,少量嘅興建嘅時候要趕時間啲嘅咧，咁可能就質素方面就有啲偏差。咁所以咧，後來亦都相當一部分咧，就未足四十年都不足啊，就會係重建嘅咁。咁依個我同意嘅，所以四點四段咧講到房署咧為樓齡啊約莫四十年或以上嘅老化屋村長全面嘅勘察咧啊，咁樣咧依啲咧一定會要做，但係咧由於咁樣係涉及一啲。Costs were also had to be considered, and recently there has to be some comparison because we talked about overtime, and that leads to so. So if the plot ratio could be fully utilized, it could be more reasonable. This is about um, maximization of public resources. So I have a question on para 4.5. Uh, the CSI program was launched in 2005 September. I'd like to know whether uh, uh, HD staff were deployed to do it because you talk about um, an inspection and other th visual inspection. So I'd like to know uh, how much of the work is uh, done in house, how much uh, has been outsourced. Because uh, with outsourcing, you have uh, to call tenders and uh, carry out more procedures. I'd like to know uh, which one is more efficient. Should you do it in-house or by outsourcing? And in terms of quality, is there any difference between uh, work being uh, done in-house and uh, by outsourcing? So I'd like to know. Uh, is anything uh, the public should know concerning this CSI program that was rolled out in uh, September 2005? Thank you. A CSI program, CSI is a very um, specialized work. Uh, the bulk of the work is being done by HD staff. I can read the paper. Uh, we have a visual inspection is just part of the processes. So we you first uh, take up uh, the old plans or plans and uh, calculations and uh, maintenance work, records of maintenance works of these old housing estates. And then visual inspection uh, to see whether there are any problems. And then we also have site and laboratory testing. And we have a very detailed structural assessment. And uh, we will also consider the necessary repair maintenance needed if uh, the housing block is to uh, be uh, used for another 50 years. 15 years. We work out the financial assessment and see whether it is economical or not. I dare to say this because uh, we have done uh, so uh, many of uh, this before, so much of this before. Uh, we uh, 
can take pride uh, in this area, and uh, we haven't we've even uh, promoted experience overseas. So it's entirely done in house. Now, if you can uh, really export this kind of expertise uh, to other parts of the world, that means we have a competitive edge here. All right, para four point nine. Repair cost. I think there is quite a big discrepancy. Uh, it ranged from twelve hundred to forty-seven thousand nine hundred per flat. But uh, you have carried out so much repair. I like to know on average what is uh, the cost per flat, because uh, the production cost per flat is about. Seven hundred thousand. What about the average repair cost per flat? Well, uh, the range here is twelve hundred to forty-seven thousand nine hundred dollars per flat. Well, uh, for uh, Seoul Estate and Tongta Estate, uh, the cost was over. Would be over forty thousand dollars and was not considered economically viable. Uh, the range is indeed quite big. For some, it may be uh, one thousand six hundred, and others ten thousand dollars or so. Uh, for a flats recently uh, investigated, uh, inspected about five to six thousand dollars per flat. Mister Mleng Sheng. Uh, asked you a question now. Even if uh, for So can Tong Tong Chao, uh, the uh, range is above forty six thousand to forty seven thousand. But then you also have to address four point one nine B and C. So you have uh, to consider it as a whole. You do not just consider the uh, repair cost, unit repair cost only, right? Yeah, I just want to uh, have this explained because you uh, also have to consider whether there is uh, flats for incantation and for in situ uh, rehousing. Mr. Mleng Singh, a five to six thousand per flat in repair costs, and if we can keep the flat uh, going for another fifteen years, well, I think uh, this is uh, worth it. Even if it is forty thousand dollars, but uh, if the conditions are already very bad, of course, if you divide it by fifteen years, it is not too expensive, and it's still different from building a new unit. So. Perhaps for some flats, uh, you can have uh, additional lifespan of ten years or three or five years because the quality of uh, repair would depend on how much longer you want the flats to last. Now, if you want to keep for under eight years. Then you only spend enough to keep it for eight years, because if you repair all the flats to ensure that it can serve for another fifteen years, it may not be entirely cost effective. So, uh, will fifteen years be a hard and fast standard? Well, as I said, uh, this is not just a one-off. Cost right every year you have recurrent expenditure. Yes, every year there is recurrent maintenance works to maintain a structural safety. We have uh, to have a large scale uh, structural maintenance. In that uh, CS in CSI, we uh, set the uh, standard, and it is to. Uh, Make the flats suitable for use for another fifteen years, and I uh, will see whether we have appropriate resources nearby 
for decantation. If after CSI, uh, we believe uh, there, if we believe a redevelopment is imminent, we will um, do the bare minimum to ensure safety. So you do adjust, right? You you don't uh, repair all the flats to ensure that they will last another fifteen years. Exactly right. Yeah, this is reasonable, logical. Yes, please go on. That's it. That's it, because uh, you and I both want to go early. Uh, are you in a hurry to go? No, 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 I will stay for as long as you like. But I, if we have no more questions, well, well, I have um, still a couple of questions left. First, why 15 years? Is it a medium figure or have you um, reviewed or housing estates and uh, is it uh, the cycle, uh, is it the time taken for uh, one cycle of CSI to be conducted? This is a rather a technical issue. We will consider uh, the um, speed of um, uh, of um, re uh, of rust rusting of uh, reinforced concrete and also uh, the lifespan of uh, reinforced concrete. This is the first CSI. This is the first cycle. We have not done it, uh, completed one cycle yet because we'll talk about 42 blo uh, blocks. I think uh, it is safe to adopt a standard of 15 years, okay? After we have conducted completed one cycle, we go back and check whether it has departed too much from our original assessment. Uh, after 15 years, we may carry out some additional structural maintenance, we believe. Given our uh, availability, given the availability of technology, we believe 15 years is a reasonable time. All right, four point two three, four point two four. All right, twenty two aged housing estates have uh, completed the review. When will you decide whether these uh, aged estates uh, should be uh, repaired and maintained? Uh, for uh, for continued use or for redevelopment. So, uh, can you tell us when uh, you will uh, decide what to do with these aged PRH estates? All right, we have completed an, a review of the redevelopment potential of these twenty-two estates. That doesn't mean that it was for sure be redeveloped. It depends on our, the, the structural safety and also the considerations under the enhanced policy on redevelopment because we cannot take on too many in one year because that will affect the supply of units. When you redevelop a housing estate, old flats will uh, go and as a result we will have uh, less flats available for applicants on the waiting list. So we have to take this into account. Ada, do you have anything to add? I uh, by and large agree with the Secretary. We will review the redevelopment potential of these housing estates and when we have suitable decantation resources, we will start a detailed consideration and uh, we will consult the relevant policy bureaus and we must uh, come up with a plan before we start consulting the community, the local community, before we can uh, start a redevelopment scheme. Of course, oh, you have to consider where the tenants should live while uh, the housing estates are being redeveloped. Or right, may I refer to paragraph 4.28 and 29? 
the uh, transit centers and also the IH, interim housing. I'd like to know whether uh, they are meant for temporary accommodation of affected households or for other purposes. Now, when we have a clearance operation, uh, some people may be um, rendered homeless. So they will be uh, housed in transit center first. And then if uh, they are eligible, they will uh, be moved to IH, but they must be eligible for public housing first. Uh, that is, uh, if they uh, wait in an IH for a while, they will be allocated flats. That means uh, the IH, no, 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 all right. It's not for decantation of redeveloped housing estates. All right, para 4.29. When a flat is being redeveloped or when a site is being redeveloped, uh, will you first ensure that there is another housing estate in situ or nearby for rehousing first before you start uh, redevelopment? Details, please refer to it. Or rather, uh, Mr. Ying, uh, I say a few words first and other colleagues can supplement. All right, para 4.19. A, B, C. I think they are critical. If we want to redevelop an estate, we won't uh, settle them in interim housing. We will try to identify PRH in the local area before we will demolish their estate. So C says if we don't find adequate rehousing resources, we will not uh, demolish the estate. So Mr. Leung is referring to interim housing. So Kwai Sing Dong interim housing was demolished to and converted so if we can reduce the interim housing we will if the conditions are appropriate they will be converted they will either be demolished or converted that is appropriate so Interim housing has a special purpose. We don't want people to be homeless. It's not for people in the waiting list. It's not for re redevelopment. Could, it's a separate issue. Could you clarify it for us? Interim housing, it's not to house people on the waiting list because they want PRH. They don't want interim housing. If we have redevelopment projects and uh, people vacated, they will be assigned to PRH, not interim housing. So paragraph 4.29, we have three interim housing sec, Lei Long Bin and Bo Tin, 4,914 units. Is that the total sum of interim housing in Hong Kong? Or do you have other interim it's the total sum. The vacancy rate, 60, 40, and 8 percent. So do you need to maintain so many units? So can some be redeveloped and uh, provide more units? As note three, note thirteen says, we have decided to clear Longbin interim housing in Yunlong for public housing development. Regarding the vacancy rate, there is a certain ratio, 
we have to set aside for natural disaster and redevelopment. We have to maintain a certain amount. That's a policy. So I don't have any more questions for part four. If I do have, I'll follow up in writing. Do you have, if necessary, we can do so in writing. Part five is about future direction. Just now, Professor Zhang said that uh, can the target of 280,000 target be met? The most important criteria is the land supply for PRH. I'd like to ask Mr. Chan. Uh, we have asked a lot of questions. Uh, land suitable for PRH. Have you considered what the smallest area is for PRH? Is there a standard? Will you build just one PRH building? Or do you need at least 10 or 8 buildings? Do you need a certain economy of scale? Mr. Chan? I'd like to defer to Planning Department before I go into my response. Could you also answer when you redevelop their environment? It might be a low density neighborhood when you redevelop, will it affect the density? That's also a planning perspective. Thank you, Chairman. You're aware that in the last two years we've been looking for land. We have identified 150 sites to provide more than 200,000 units. So when we identify these sites, what will be private and what will be public we will liaise with the housing department. There are some criteria. First, in public housing, we'll choose sites suitable for high density development for PRH. Second, it should be accessible by public transport. And third, the site uh, should be larger so when we build public housing the cost effectiveness can be better there is a need for both public and private housing so from our perspective the, the public and private are twin brothers of course there is another factor to consider in an existing estate if we can identify a site a land close to it if we can uh, increase the supply of PRH, we will uh, consider these as a first priority because there would be uh, benefits in management. So these are the principles in selecting sites suitable for PRH. In redevelopment of public estates, we have close liaison with 
housing department. Uh, they feel that some estates are suitable for redevelopment. We will conduct a planning review. Uh, we'll do a few things. We'll look at the redevelopment potential. Uh, this potential There might be some constraining factors. We look at uh, the urban planning. Uh, for example, the can we retain uh, the view? Uh, for example, uh, if the will it uh, obstruct the view of uh, Lion Rock Ridge? Uh, is it a major wind corridor? Uh, we will give our views to housing department. So uh, they might have to put higher buildings in a certain area. Uh, there are also other environmental constraints, uh, traffic noise. Uh, this will affect the layout. Another factor mentioned just now, uh, social services. Do we need to provide social services to improve the provision of services? Public estates, uh, when you redevelop them, you'll encounter some difficulties. The existing tenants would like to be resettled in situ. So, some large estates, Dai Hangdong, could we use? We, we would build some. Uh, uh, we would build some uh, housing on the uh, soccer pitch and then we would convert uh, the demolished site into a soccer field so ultimately you still have a soccer pitch but uh, th uh, in the redevelopment uh, they might be without a soccer pitch uh, for a few years so So sometimes we would have to uh, look beyond the estate and identify different methods. And uh, that's where we've been cooperating with the housing department. You refer to redevelopment. And redevelopment will increase the plot ratio. Oh, there's still a limit to the plot ratio. So I'd like to know, in a typical situation, how much will the plot ratio increase and to what extent have you Do we really want to live in such crowded housing? Could you could you respond? The increase of plot ratio is an important consideration. First of all, we need to make the most use of land. Old estates have a low plot ratio. They had a lower, uh, they had less number of stories. So we can increase the plot ratio, but uh, you, your consideration is reasonable. We have to consider whether the increase in plot ratio is acceptable and whether the transport infrastructure can handle it. So 
in our so we'll provide our input in the planning review to the housing department Chairman, you are correct. Uh, when we s look at the issue, there are two perspectives. A macro view, the situation of the community, and the site. That is the site. How much can the site build? Uh, community services, infrastructure, whether that can be improved and whether we can accommodate more people that is part of the review we won't just look at the site we will look at the whole district thank you two more questions uh, just now the secretary said the supply of uh, PRH uh, depends on land but uh, the finance is not the most critical or most important but I feel that is not the case because the SAR, uh, aside uh, from housing, our education, medical expenses, social welfare expenses, are e escalating every year. I'm referring to the. Uh, FS uh, working group on uh, long-term fiscal planning, we are to provide for the 10-year housing program of uh, PRH quite a lot of resources is required. And according to the secretary, is fine so long as you ask the government for money, uh, you can surely get it. Is it really as simple as that? Now, para 5.4. Or we have strategic with strategic um, proposals here. Uh, in the long term, supply, or rather, the supply of PRX should be supply led. That is, well, at the last meeting, I asked whether. The uh, administration, the long term, has any uh, any vision? Do we uh, want to uh, be a welfare state and uh, do have a certain uh, a target of housing a certain percentage of a population in PRH, or is it that the longer the waiting list, the more land and money you will uh, make available for the construction of PRH because you do have a uh, a uh, rough uh, AWT performance pledge of three years. So if uh, the policy is supply-led, that means you're not going to do anything in terms of demand. You will just uh, work on the supply side. Uh, if uh, that's the case, then I think uh, you are uh, you 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 will um, the resources will be quite tight, secretary. I believe I I should be the one to answer first. Uh, a supply led strategy. Well, we know that uh, we do have a very. Um, we have uh, we we are under and we're strained to provide sufficient PRH, so we've adopted a supply-led um, policy. However, uh, will we follow the footstep of Singapore? Will we consider the affordability? We uh, have an income and means uh, test for uh, PRH tenants. 
to define affordability. So we do not have an indefinite supply of PRH. Now we agree that the uh, formula for working out affordability is uh, reasonable, then that means uh, there are demands, there is a demand in society, and we'll try to fulfill that as fast as possible. Now, we have um, we have uh, family categories. We have uh, uh, the non-elderly one person applicants under the quota and points system. Now, for this, we do not have uh, the performance pledge of three years of AWT. So, is money not important? Of course not. But the question is, without land, money is useless. So, uh, the uh, limiting factor is land. Members may recall that earlier this year, the CE proposed a target of 470,000 flats in both public and private sectors per year, and then 280,000 will be uh, subsidized housing, with 80,000 of them being HOS flats, and will ensure that there is sufficient resources, financial resources, to meet this target. Of course, there are uh, different um, there are competing demands from uh, from education for medical and health social welfare so the HA has started its discussion with the Treasury in response to the FS aspirations mentioned in his budget that is, the HA should uh, maximize its financial resources and it should also uh, consider the long-term financial resources required for delivering that amount of flats. Secretary, in your paper to the PAC in the past 10 years, the construction cost uh, was around 9 to $10 billion. However, for LTHS, now let's set aside the 80,000 HOS flats. You have to build 200,000 uh, PRH flats. That means you need $20 billion to do that. So you have to double what you get, what you got uh, per year for the past 10 years. So, you know, money is not limit, unlimited. Uh, So in the coming 10 years, jumping from $9 billion per year, you need $20 billion per year. That, that would mean a very big budget for the HA. Can you uh, use your own uh, statistics to calculate uh, the budget. I think the annual growth uh, will be very big. We won't be able to give you any uh, figures uh, on spot because we are working out the uh, sums and uh, we are now uh, working out our, uh, our long-term financial uh, resources. It is important because we have to look at it from a value for money perspective. We have to ensure how it is done properly, and we have uh, used your own statistics. Now, in the past, you built only 15,000 flats per year. And now, you're going to build 20,000 per year using uh, the um, unit cost of 700,000. Uh, the budget can be quite big. Uh, well, uh, the um, FS has uh, discussed this in his policy address. He said that he would ensure that there would be sufficient resources for the HA to uh, uh, do what is required of it in the policy address. And the FS has also uh, demanded us to uh, keep enhancing our cost effectiveness and our long-term uh, sustainability. We're asked uh, to uh, tidy up our income and expenditure and uh, carry out a long-term financial projection of what we need. As I said, 
Well, we have started our discussion. We've started our discussion with uh, the FS and TB. However, we can't be too uh, detailed today because uh, there are a, a lot of um, uncertainties, and we have uh, also the uh, double uh, envelope uh, uh, situation. Uh, we have been building 15,000 flats per year. Uh, in future, we will need uh, money for another 5,000 flats. No, no, 7,000. Because you have to deliver uh, what uh, the CE promised. You mean HOS? No, 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 PRH housing. Well, we have been uh, building 15,000 per year. No, no. Uh, out of that 470,000, well, uh, that's uh, 5,000. Uh, an extra five thousand, and then uh, the um, production, uh, the um, projected production, uh, was further uh, moved up. We have to understand the value for money uh, aspect, and we have to understand uh, what the society, what society wants as far as provision of public housing is concerned. Now, I have no objection to that target, but we have to understand uh, what um, is actually needed. No, 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 I have no intention to uh, uh, to do the calculation now, but for value for money uh, sake, we have to start doing it. The FS, I just repeated uh, what the FS said in his budget speech, and I think uh, this is in line with what you said about value for money. What the SF said in his budget speech uh, was different in nature from what the CE said in his policy address. All right, you have uh, to build 470,000, but how much money will be given to HA per year? You you have uh, to uh, do the calculation. It doesn't matter. We've already asked our question, and we uh, hope that you can give us a re an answer. Not necessary now, but you have uh, to uh, work out the um figures for us. I know you are self-financing. You don't have to ask the government for money uh, in the uh, recent couple of years, but then in order to um, deliver the production targets, I think you have to ask for money sooner or later. And, uh, the CE said in his PA that HA will certainly have the means to build the flats required of it. But as I said, there might be competing and uh, equally uh, important demands from other aspects in society. So can you tell us your the progress of discussion with the TS, FS, and TB, and how much money will be given by the FS and TB? Uh, well, we still have time. And you have also uh, got a flat, uh, housing estates 40, 50 years old uh, due for redevelopment. Have you factored that in into your production of 20,000 flats per year? And what, how much money will be needed and what will be the demand on manpower? Well, Mr. Ying, last year you had uh, you made a loss of you had a deficit of you had a deficit. Hang on. Mm, the deficit was zero point eight billion. So you already had a deficit last year. So uh, PAC has to look at it from uh, from a value for money uh, perspective. We're not going to close uh, this file. We will continue to follow up. All right. Uh, first, uh, we set the targets with um, with a consensus in the community. What we have to do is to achieve this target in a cost in a value for money manner. Yes, you have to show us uh, the calculations. We support you, but we have to understand uh, who is going to foot the bill because the 
the community should know we do have uh, the duty to reflect this to the community. Mr. Chen, have you got something to add? Thank you. Uh, the, defi uh, the deficit of zero point eight billion dollars. Uh, that's from PRH. Yes, but if you look at the paper table today, if you take into consideration other projects, uh, you uh, still have a surplus. But I don't think uh, that the surplus uh, will be used to uh, fill up the deficit. Now, PR our H of a will have a surplus because the setting of rent has nothing to do with our recurrent expenditure. Uh, so uh, from time to time, uh, we may have a deficit or a surplus in our PRH, said the speaker. But then uh, we hope to uh, make good use of our resources. Okay, that's good. It's 5.6. But uh, there's a lot that you need to uh, do. It's not to cover the def deficit. Paul is very familiar with the figures. So we're not being picky. We just need to understand the figures. I have a question for you. I'd like to supplement on land. You have 150 sites. Uh, to build 20,000. So these 150 sites, how much of that is uh, green sites? How many of them are brown sites? These are very difficult sites. The information we provided on the last occasion indicated that in the coming five years we want to uh, reconvert these 150 sites to 20,000 uh, flats and 70% will be APRH. And in the last few weeks, there have been reports uh, about our colleagues going to district councils uh, they have encountered obstacles Uh, how many of our brownfield brown sites in the 150 site? Can you come up with a figure of 20,000 units per year? In the 150 sites, how many of them will be rezoned? We've responded to the development panel. Uh, half of these sites are green uh, sites, and we have GIC sites. So they need to be rezoned. The green zones it depends on the location, the area, but we're going f full steam ahead, and we urge legislators to support us when we increase the density, convert GIC or green sites. We will make reference to Hong Kong planning standards and guidelines, and uh, we'll also uh, examine transport and waste disposal. Wherever we encounter difficulties, we will liaise with the relevant departments to minimize the impact on the community. We cannot pledge there will be no impact. So planning, could you tell us that planning standards and guidelines will not compromise existing facilities? No. You need to comply with the planning standards. So. in the existing PRH areas. If you have a soccer pitch, will you deprive 
low income families of what they're enjoying right now? You'd be deviating from the planning standards and guidelines. You understand? When you build, you need to comply with planning standards. But now you've increased the density and population. You deprive them of a soccer pitch. And you're saying that you're not going to deprive them. So is that really the case? We will comply with the standard, planning standards and guidelines. You need district council support and legislative council support. Those are the minimum standards. You cannot go lower than that. In fact, we do encounter situations a GIC site, but the distribution of resources uh, uh, have not been realized for some period of time, so they will have some interim measures, so we can have a site for building, and at the same time uh, substitute site in a later uh, occasion uh, can replenish and different GIC sites might have different uses so when they review they will have co-location in one or two sites but the basic principle as chairman you said planning standard and guidelines uh, pollution requirements have to be complied with. Planning department is the goalkeeper. They cannot compromise quality for quantity. We want quality and quantity. If we don't have any other questions, I have to thank the secretaries and officials for answering our questions. If necessary, we will right and and I hope you can also provide written responses to any questions written questions you might have thank you